The World Travel and Tourism Council has predicted by the year 2028, India will become the world's third largest travel and tourism economy following China and the U.S. It seems quite plausible given the fact that Indian travelers took nearly 2 billion domestic and international trips in 2018 and spent a whopping $94 billion on transportation, lodging and consumption during those trips. This according to an April 2019 study by Bain and Company. India's travel industry is now poised to grow 13% CAGR to $136 billion by 2021. And while offline channels continue to be the preferred medium for bookings, we can expect nearly $24 billion in incremental bookings made online by 2021. Now, on the back of increased internet penetration, taking the share of online booking channels from 25% to 35%. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest-running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and one company that has been on the right side of India's love for travel is Make My Trip. It is now by far the most popular online platform for most Indian travelers looking to book their journeys in this highly competitive and fragmented space. And the numbers speak for themselves. Make My Trip saw gross bookings for its third quarter grow 19% at a cool $1.7 billion. It's managed to halve operating losses as it works to become the one-stop shop for all travel services. Joining me now is the founder and now exactly executive chairman of Make My Trip, Deep Kalra. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Deep is one of India's first tech entrepreneurs, also an active angel investor and one of our very early young Turks. Deep, uh, as always, thanks very much for joining us here on the program and uh, uh, it's good to have you back. Thank you, Shireen. It's a pleasure always to be here. I think you've got to call the program Not So Young Turks. <laughs> yes, that will be a whole different program. But Deep, I want to talk to you about the change that has happened as far as your portfolio is concerned. You've uh, now taken over as executive chairman. Rajesh takes over as the group CEO, ostensibly so that you can focus on uh, product innovation, expansion, geographic growth. Uh, why this need to separate the two roles and what exactly are you going to be doing? Uh, yeah, no, it's a great question, Shireen. I think uh, the the reason to uh, really separate these two roles is, I think, uh, to do with the size and scale of the business. We are, like you said, now uh, a really scaled business. I think, uh, you know, we should close this fiscal anywhere close to about $7 billion, 35,000 crores in gross bookings, which is a, a sizable number. Uh, we did a pretty large uh, merger just a couple of years ago with Go Ibibo and Redbus. And so there's, I think, a lot going on in the company. And uh, we felt it's a good time for us to be uh, prudent and also future-proof our business. So while the chief executive of the group can focus on the here and now and probably the next few quarters or the next fiscal, uh, I think uh, the, the role of a full-time executive chairman, and I should call out it is a full-time role, I'm not by any means uh, uh, checking out, uh, <laughs> is going to be one that can focus on issues which will uh, probably help us a few years down the line. And it's really hard to do both things at the same time. I mean, I, have, I can tell you from past experience, mm. having been uh, both chairman and group, uh, uh, group CEO, it's really hard to balance the two. And uh, willy-nilly, and especially if you're a hmm. public listed company, willy-nilly you get caught into uh, the immediate sure. and the short term. So yeah, that's, that's really the logic behind this. But Deep, I want to pick up on some of the things that you spoke of uh, and uh, how the focus and the emphasis for you is going to be on future-proofing the company. Now, when you say uh, that you want to work on future-proofing the company, give me the levers that you want to deploy in order for you to be able to do so. Prioritize for me what the roadmap looks like. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, Shireen, I think one of the things one has realized over the last 19, almost 20 years of uh, running uh, an online travel company and building is that uh, very often the things that hold you in good stead in the long term uh, don't actually pay off great mm. results uh, immediately. And most of these are around the whole product and technology realm. So which is really the, the, the core of our business. Uh, you know, some of the things that you want to develop and roll out pretty fast 
are like quick fixes and they're like band-aids and they serve the purpose to a certain point of time. But if I look back and I see uh, why have we reached where we are today or why is Make My Trip the, the preferred, as mm. you said, the preferred platform for people to book their uh, tickets, why is Redbus the preferred platform, bus tickets, it's really because the, at the heart of the matter, the mm. core booking engine, the overall experience that we're able to give our uh, customers is something which has been built quite painstakingly and it doesn't show up great results. So, you know, at the same point of time, you've almost got to be doing a parallel process where at one time you're running, like I said, for uh, the next few quarters, maybe one fiscal, but there's a parallel yeah. track on which you're building out stuff uh, for the next few years. And that's the kind of stuff I want to uh, focus yeah. on uh, in terms of product. In terms of uh, geographical expansion, uh, we think the time has come. There are some markets yeah. internationally, and you will hear from the company over time, uh, where uh, we are going to make a foray as a local brand. So not just sending people overseas or addressing non-resident Indians overseas coming to India. That's something we already yeah. do. But yeah. this is actually being a local brand in yeah. some markets. We see opportunities where we can replicate what we've done in India. Uh, Deep, I want to pick up on some of the issues that you spoke of. And let's start by talking about this uh, aspiration to be a local player in global markets. Now, what's the timeline? Uh, what are the uh, imminent geographies that, uh, that we're looking at? What's the aspiration there? Yeah, I can talk about the aspiration. I can give you a sense of the timeline. I probably won't be able to mention the geos. Uh, uh, we are a listed company. If we haven't shared something uh, with the street and we reported our results as recently as 48 hours mm. ago, uh, then it's hard to talk about it. But, yeah. uh, but you'll definitely hear from us in the next couple of quarters. Uh, and uh, we've identified a few markets where we will go in and uh, replicate what we've done out here. We'll obviously use big pieces uh, of our code, we'll use big pieces of uh, you know the overall product experience, uh, but we'll localize it. So in some cases, that will be quite dramatically different. Uh, we will uh, also have senior people who will be then running only that full time, uh, and we're going to see. Uh, okay. We're going to we're going to share that uh, with you fairly soon, uh, and it's going to be quite exciting because we've, you know, forever actually held back on the temptation to go out and to replicate this in other markets. We've got lots of offers, lots of places look tempting, mm. but we've always felt that the job's not yet done in India, which it still isn't. I think there's a lot to do, but if we look at domestic air, I think that's one market where uh, you know, we now have enough heft mm. uh, where we are looking at other verticals. But when you look at the hotel market, we're you know, penetrated less than 10% mm. online. So it's really, we're a small part of the overall market. So there's work to be done there which Rajesh will focus on, uh, who, okay. uh, which I've been telling okay. uh, my people internally because they had similar questions uh, that, you know, Rajesh makes by far a better CEO at scale than I do. So I'm very happy to hand over those reins to him. I am fundamentally an entrepreneur who likes doing new things and I want to keep doing something new. I'm, I'm fairly restless. Okay, so it's interesting that uh, that uh, this uh, plan to go local in global markets should play itself out uh, uh, in the next few quarters. You're not telling us which geographies, but Deep, uh, uh, what will the route be? Will the route be uh, to pick up existing businesses in those markets and then integrate them and then set up a local business there? Or are you going to go in there uh, as make my trip? Uh, what is the preferred strategy likely to be? Or is it going to be horses for courses? Yeah, I think I was going to say that. It is pretty much horses for courses. It's, it's, it could be a hybrid. Uh, I think we definitely, at the end of the day, will have to build a local team. We'll have to do a lot of organic work. But if there are assets out there which we think can add value, we won't hesitate. Uh, we, we have the, the balance sheet to go ahead and, and acquire for cash or, or otherwise uh, even lever the balance sheet if required. So I think we, it'll be a mix of both. As part of the future proofing strategy, how much of fiscal prudence plays a role in that? And I'll ask you that in the context of the results that you just declared 48 hours ago. Uh, adjusted operating loss has narrowed year over year to about $11 million from $22.2 million. Uh, you know, what's the What's the picture looking like in terms of being able to curb losses and, uh, and move to black? Yeah, no, I thank you for bringing that up, Shireen. So I think it's been a really good story this quarter. I think the best part about this quarter 
uh, is the fact that we've managed to maintain growth in a fairly tough environment. I think we are all aware that GDP growth has fallen off from the same time last year from 6.8% to under 5%, 4.8%. Uh, consequently, there's been a slowdown also in, in travel and tourism. We know that discretionary income among middle class people has fallen off and, you know, therefore disposable income for travel has also come down. So all of that we are acutely aware of. Despite that, managing to report uh, fairly healthy growth, you know, in terms of hotel uh, booking room nights, 21%. In terms of overall GMV growth, uh, you know, 18-19%. Mm and bringing down our losses by half, cutting by half into, I think, really touching distance of uh, break even, which is super exciting, uh, I think, to be able to do both things. And again, most satisfying for the team and for me is the fact that this is a strategy we embarked a few quarters ago. We said we're going to do this. We stuck mm. to the knitting. We tried to stay away from the temptation of uh, further discounting. Uh, and couponing, etc. And we stayed away and we've managed to, I think, uh, build a far more robust business uh, because of that. So it's very satisfying and I think the markets recognize that. I'm not one who typically says, oh, because the market's given a double thumbs up or a triple thumbs up in this case, we had a very healthy uh, increase both days after the earnings. But uh, it obviously uh, does help if you get that kind of feedback from the market. So, yeah, I think we're, we're moving along the right lines. As we open up new geos, we'll have to be uh, prudent and disciplined in financing uh, or in the way we spend. But I think it's also fair to say every new market will have its own gestation period. So I think, you know, India's had time, so India now can get very close to profitability and at scale. And as you know, in the internet models that can flip very quickly, uh, which is uh, exactly the plan. But for international markets, I think we'll, we'll have to be patient. But if we don't take those punts, then I think mm. we'll be missing some opportunities. So we're quite happy to continue to grow. Okay. Uh, Deep, since you talked about, uh, you know, moving away from the temptation of further discounting, etc., I want to bring up the issue that you are dealing with, uh, and that has to do with the CCI probe. It's ordered a probe into contractual terms with hoteliers, denial of access, predatory pricing, misrepresentation of information. Uh, the CCI's observation is that there is a prima facie case for investigation of both Make My Trip and OYO. Uh, now, you know, how do you respond to what is going on with the competition Commission and specifically on this issue of predatory pricing because this has become an issue that the government, forget the CCI, the government uh, is up in arms against. Yeah, I think we've obviously been taken uh, back with uh, the CCI uh, uh, you know, case and we are uh, going to obviously respond to it. We are already underway. We are preparing. Uh, we don't think there's such a case. Like I said earlier on, uh, the hotel market is still barely penetrated. Whichever figures you believe, it's between 10 to 15 percent penetrated online, of which uh, even if our market share is 40 or 50 percent, we're talking about, you know, 5 or 7 or 8 percent. So really, we're still a small part of the overall market. Uh, and uh, uh, for us to be, uh, I think, accused of, uh, uh, you know, having either monopolistic uh, sway over the market and therefore being able to exercise predatory mm. pricing, uh, we believe is harsh, but then now it's it's pretty much uh, something which we will have to take up with the authorities. We fully respect the CCI and we will, uh, you know, go ahead and respond to all their questions. But uh, since we were talking about the CCI, what about the regulatory uh, headwinds and the regulatory challenges? Uh, how much of your bandwidth, your time personally, is is being spent on on these issues, and how much of a risk do you believe that this is going to be as far as uh, the future strategy is concerned? Oh, a lot of time goes into this. Of course, some of these factors are things which are beyond our control. So one can take a point of view; you can't do anything about it. But you know that I think is uh, superficial. Uh, I think when uh, macros are tough, then you have to be more innovative. You have to find other things or smarter ways of doing the same thing. Let's take the case of uh, the current uh, coronavirus scare, which is obviously a real global crisis, particularly in the East. Uh, we've had cancellations, mm. uh, which is obviously not surprising, not just to China, but also to Hong Kong, Macau, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, and other parts of Southeast Asia, and which is to be expected. So a lot of pressure 
on the on the customer service uh, side which again we fully understand where customers are coming from uh, trying to help out the customers best we can trying to get full refunds or at least get the ability that you can yeah, uh, you know, use the same kind of booking credit uh, for a long period of time over six months or over 12 months, because sometimes that's all we can do rather than uh, the customers losing out completely. Hmm. Uh, however, at the same point of time, uh, one has to understand westward, a lot of people are still traveling. I myself was in Europe last week. A lot of people are actually switching their plans away from an eastbound travel to a westward travel. So that's pretty interesting if you think about it. And right. uh, but also mm. because of the big cancellations caused from China, you know, let's not forget if India has got 30 to 35 million people traveling overseas, China has got almost 200 million yeah. people traveling overseas every year. So a lot of cancellations and this fell squarely in the period of their, uh, you know, New Year holiday, which is a time when they travel a lot. So there yes. are destinations which are facing. Yeah. And so there's an opportunity for us to actually go there. Uh, talk to those suppliers, those hoteliers and say, can we take up that in, you know, inventory? Can we get a better deal? Because I think Indians may be able to travel out there because the Chinese aren't traveling at all, rightfully so. They've been all told to stay at home and stay as isolated as possible. And these could be destinations which are completely safe uh, because Chinese were pr probably traveling, okay. pretty much traveling all over the world. So there are opportunities and I think you've got to be mm -hmm. uh, smart about this. Uh, you know, one of the advantages of being uh, a, a 19 or a 20 year old company is that we also saw the SARS uh, crisis in 2003 and I think we learned from that. So I think there are things we can yeah. do and that's what we're trying to do. So I'm spending a lot of time trying to figure out how we can actually uh, uh, be prudent and smart during this crisis. Mm -hmm. Sadeep, I'll end then by asking you, Rajesh has spoken about Make My Trip uh, becoming a super app for travel. Now break that down for me. In the next 12 months, what should we expect on that front? So in the next 12 months, you should expect to see more products being launched. So new products, uh, which probably you we haven't seen today in the travel realm largely. So things that you would do while traveling, things that you need which can help you while traveling during your travels as well or sometimes when you have the time but you can't travel and get away things that you can do on the weekend so i think you can expect to see that coming from us for sure we we're already underway with some of that new geographies i spoke about but most importantly uh, i'd like to focus and stress a lot on a much better customer experience i'm our biggest uh, critic of our own uh, product and i still think we are a little better than average and we have a long way to go so i'm going to be super focused on making sure that the product experience okay. is going to get better and better uh and uh you know i think that's the most at the end of the day that's the most important thing all right deep we'll have to leave it there always a pleasure best of luck uh, in your new innings as executive chairman it's always a pleasure speaking with you thanks very much for joining us here on young turks